let's talk a couple of other things. We've just got two little final topics to close out here uh, in Chapter 4. Uh, what I want to show you is a little about database management. I want to talk to you about how to move databases. Uh, so that's what this video is about, how to move a database in analysis services. You might be moving a database from server to server, from instance to instance, from disk to disk, from folder to folder. And the second thing that we want to talk about is the disaster recovery, dealing with backup and restore in analysis services. And we'll do that one in the next video. So this video, it's actually about a new feature here in Analysis Services 2008, the ability to attach and detach. Those of you coming from a SQL Server management background, you probably do this uh, you know, fairly consistently. You attach a database or you detach a database. Uh, in analysis services, we have the same need, so you know we can do it now. It's actually uh, not that difficult. Ah, <laughs> scratch that. It's actually kind of difficult uh, because of the weird uh, user interface designs uh, that we have to deal with. So let's actually take a look. So I'm assuming that you went through and completed the exercise two with me, so you have the sample. You want to follow along, that's great. I didn't write an exercise for this one. I figure that you can kind of follow along and do what I'm doing if you wanted to uh, follow along. So what the first thing that I need to do, I need to go ahead and close my cube over here. You can see we have an MDX uh, query open up here. I need to go ahead and close that because that creates an open connection. Rule is you cannot detach when you have an open connection. Okay, so I close my that my uh, query there. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to come up with a little scenario here, and sometimes it's easier for me to write it than you have to depend on understanding my accent. Um, so, and I, I know that <laughs> to some of you, you're probably going, "What accent?" But I mean, you know, we have customers in uh, 70, 80 countries out there, so I'm sure lots of people think I have an accent. Uh, so let's think. Um, you kind of have to play along. Uh, we uh, da, 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 da. we just purchased a new set of hard drives and now uh, and have added them as drive J. We now want to move our analysis services database to this location. The rule is one minimal downtime. Okay. That's the, the rule that we have to play. So what are the techniques that we would go through? What are the possibilities? Well, you really have two choices here. You could either do an attach or you could do a backup and a restore. Uh, I'll do the backup and restore in this video. We'll do the uh, backup and restore. I'll do the attach and detach in this video, and I'll do backup and restore in the next video. I think for this type of stuff, I would opt for the detach and attach. Okay, the process of detaching and attaching, in case you're not really familiar with the term, um, is you are basically going to take the database offline. That's the detach. Now, when we detach it, it has no more ties to this instance of analysis services. It is strictly a folder with analysis services files in it. They're not tied to any particular instance. So that means that you can take them, you can move them across the network, you can move them to a new drive, uh, you can move them to a new server, you can attach them to a different instance. Okay? So you're not making a copy of the database, you are simply changing where it is. Okay. So when you would detach, when you do a detach, that's no longer an analysis services database. Your users can't connect to it anymore. You can't connect to it anymore. It is physically out of the server. Right? When you connect the analysis services, it's not there. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you that. Okay. So I'm going to do this guy here. I'm going to detach it. And when I detach it, I have the option to give it a password and the password is really designed to protect you so that nobody gets access to your files in the interim until it's reattached to another analysis services uh, machine. So you can put yourself a password and I'll put my very secure password in here. You see what I mean? It's gone. No amount of refreshing brings that database back. 
But have I deleted it at the disk level? No. It's still at the disk. Okay. So now what I would do, we want to move it to the J drive, right? Got to remember where it is located. For this one, it was in the default, if you'll remember. And so I need to go to the properties of the server, and I need to find out what the data DIR value is. So I can just copy that. I can go to run. I can paste that in. And it loads it up. Okay, so Z, I could have done it in Windows Explorer as well, whichever way you want to do that. Okay. But so here's where it's tricky, and a lot of folks don't really grasp this because it is so radically different from how the SQL Server database engine will store files. This is it. This is what you move around. Okay, I just I want to move it. I cut it or copy it. Would probably be a safer place. I would go to my J drive, which I don't really have one. Let's pretend that this is the J drive. And I move the folder to the new location. I move it to the new server. Right? Copy it to tape and then re uh, put it back on uh, the other machine. Okay? So I have the database folder in the proper place. This is the <clears throat> J drive. Okay. <laughs> uh, so now I want to attach it. So I want to now put it back on the server. We've moved the database files. Now we want to put it back. So let's go back over here. I come and I ask it to attach. So far, so good, right? Nothing, if you've done SQL Server, attach, detach before, this is nothing out of the ordinary. But now it is. Okay, so you go to attach it. You go to your folder. Drat! You remember that browsable folders list? Ah, it's such a pain to have to deal with this here. Um, so now what you actually have to do, you have to add that folder into the browsable folders list. Okay, see, this is not the path to your folder. And, and yeah, this is just a horrible screen. I'm with you. I 100% agree. Okay? Neither of these folders contains your database. Here's the thing that you have to do. You must put the path to the database folder in your browsing folders list. And you have to be in that path. You can't be like at a subfolder above it. It won't go down and do that. You have to be at that level. So here's what you have to do. Right? It tells you down here at the bottom. You have to go modify the allowed browsing folders. Cancel. Cancel. Back over here. But I don't see allowed browsing folders. Well, that's because you need to check show advanced. Then you get the allowed browsing folders. Go get the path to it. So go drill into it and then just copy. This is all I ever do right there. I drill into the folder and then I just copy from Windows Explorer. And I go back over here and you want to add rather than replace the value. So I go to the very end. So I just I get into the value text box, I go to the end, and I put the pipe character. You know the one that I'm talking about, right? It looks just like a cursor, right? Just a pipe. That is the separator. This is basically an array. Okay? And I just paste. And you can see it now. I have, this is the new part that I've added right there. Okay? So this becomes now a new entry because of the pipe character, and that's where I'm going. So that's the path into the database folder. And when I say, OK, does it require a server restart for this to get propagated from value to current value? No. So as soon as I say, OK, that's now going to be in the browsing folders list. And I can come back over here and I can say attach. And when I click right there, now you see it being listed. And you see your new location. There it is. That's the one we want to choose. I say, OK, you got to put your password in. Say, OK, and you've done it. Okay. Now, I will tell you, I have had some gremlins creep in with respect to attach and detach from time to time. Um, I've had errors. I've had security issues. Um, I've had some 
uh, errors with being able to detach the database again. Uh, so test this out very thoroughly on your you know machines, your development, your test machines before you actually try to do something like this in production. Yeah, you know, this is kind of still a new feature for analysis services. So don't be shy about putting it through its paces before you're ready to go with production level on this one. Well, let's come back in the next video and we'll take a look at doing a backup and a recovery.